Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today is a kind of odd video because we'll be looking at a gameplay from a playlist that doesn't currently exist in matchmaking. It was a rotational big team battle free for all playlist and unfortunately I didn't get enough chance to play it. I love big team battle maps and I love big team battle in general so free for all is just heaven to me. And this is one of the few games I did get to play on Ragnarok. I believe it was the only game of free for all I have ever played on Ragnarok and it was my first game. You can see that the vehicles have probably been removed in the back of the bases and you can see that the weapons are generally the same with the railgun spawning on the side, snipers in the bases, rockets on the side, and next to machine gun turret and the Spartan laser top middle. Overall this gameplay does have some really good decision making opportunities and just due to its shortness I felt like I could really go into depth on some specific details on how to use weapons and my overall general thought process, so I hope you guys enjoy. Off the spawn here, I do have mobility and ammo, so I'm going to trade my bolt shot for the rockets as a thruster pack towards machine gun turret rock. Now, why I did that is because this guy is going to spawn over here in the water cave, and someone is probably going to spawn over here. As you can see, this player just grabbed the rail gun. Now, as I push up to machine gun turret rock, I'm just trying to bait this player so he can come closer to me. I'm getting out of his sight range so that he has to push up to see me, and when he does so, it's going to be too late because I'm going to jump out and nail him with a rocket. Seeing the guy second out my radar, I shoot one rocket at him, impact him in mid-air. Now, I would like to point out that I'm going to maneuver myself into this kind of in-between position between water cave and this like um, kind of water cave pride rock area, almost a ramp, if you will, um, so that I can get away from this guy He's going to try to railgun me, and he misses his railgun as I pull out my battle rifle um, and regain my shield here. And I pull out my rockets, but he jetpacks up, trying to find me. I jump, avoid his railgun, see the second guy on my radar pushing up, nail him with a rocket, and thrust pack over here. Now my second rocket on this guy doesn't end up hitting. He ends up reloading in a very unfortunate fashion there. I reload my two rockets, call down my overshield, and I'm ready to go. Now, unfortunately, when I push back to my spawn over here, I don't end up seeing this guy out of the corner of my eye who has just spawned here. At some points during the game, he just wasn't playing. And um, it is very important to realize that if this player had been playing, I likely would have killed him due to my overshield, but I didn't really see him because I'm not familiar with the spawns on this map. It is very important to understand that players can spawn behind you in places you spawn. For whatever reason in Halo 4, when you spawn in a specific area, um, unless it is some maps like Vortex or Meltdown, where you're not going to be really able to predict exactly where the enemy is going to spawn unless you just have a spawn trap set up, when you spawn in that area, for example, I spawned over here at the beginning of the game. Okay, This is generally where I spawned, all right? and I just look to my right to grab the rockets, and this is the same area he's spawning in. When you spawn in an area, you need to remember that's where you spawn, so that if you push out from that area, people don't spawn behind you, and you're aware if they do spawn behind you that they can do so. Um, there's many examples on Haven where if you push up on a ramp, um, people can spawn behind you on the same ramp, specifically in game types like King of the Hill and things of that nature. So unfortunately, I don't end up seeing that guy, so I'm just going to charge across the map here. Now, this could be a rash decision, but I haven't seen anybody top middle at this point, and I believe some people may be weak here. This guy has a railgun. He misses, um, quite unfortunately enough. And a guy behind me in the base ends up shooting me from behind a few times as he cleans up my kill there. Now I crash behind this rock and I'm going to fire a, a rocket at this ledge that this guy just threw a grenade off of. I'm fully expecting him to jump out and try to pursue me. So I fire this rocket but it doesn't end up connecting with anything. So I know that guy isn't there and sure enough he lifts out the side of the base. I'm shooting God's Paladin across the map. A very good player stats wise for sure. Many of the players in this game were very good. You can see this guy lifting out shooting me. And God's Paladin does come back to clean me up from the water cave lift exit. Now once again this is what I'm talking about. You can spawn behind players as you can see me do here. This bubble shield off to my right is kind of a problem because I know someone in the past few seconds laid that down. But right now I don't see anyone there, so I'm just going to look at this player off to my left as he's probably an easier kill, and sure enough he is. Now, I still keep track of that bubble shield in my mind, and this guy charges out, um, and I am able to clean him up. I'm thrust packing right after I get the kill because I'm aware that this, in general, is a spawn point area, and I could get um, shot across the map. 
and it's very important that I remain in cover. Now, I'm not exactly sure um, where this player is on my radar, because I thought that if he was down a level, the radar would show me that, but um, it doesn't really show me that for whatever reason at this point in the film. So I throw kind of a rash grenade, then I realize, oh, he's in the building to my right. Now, this is a really good conceptual play on my part. It doesn't end up working out, but my overall thought process here is, okay, this guy's in the base. I'm not going to go into the base after him because that's a rash and dumb play. I'm going to move over here, and now if the game was close and nearing the end, I'd have to pursue him, obviously. This is the earlier on the game, so I don't have to. I'm going to push over towards this area, and I'm going to act like, I'm going to act like I didn't even see him because he's crouching now, okay? He's being sneaky. So I'm going to move over here and, and look at this doorway and sort of try to bait him out and, and act like I don't even see him, but I'll be looking dead at him when he comes out. Unfortunately, he's extremely passive and doesn't even do anything like that. I mean, I see a guy in front of me, and I'm going to end up shooting him. And he's, his passive play does end up working out for him, because unfortunately, I go back, and he ends up shooting me in the head right here. It's not a very good play on my part. I should have kept track of that guy's location. I don't know why I thought he wasn't there anymore. Spotting this AFK player. Um, that was the same guy who spawned on Machine Gun Turret Rock. Thankfully, I don't get any more AFK kills during this game. I spot this guy weak. For the double kill, this guy get back over my head, and I give him the business with my battle rifle. Now, many players would argue that I don't call down my binary rifle early enough here, that I could be getting further ordnance in this game. What you have to understand is that a binary rifle on Ragnarok is extremely powerful, and in the position I'm in, I don't feel comfortable enough calling it down. Seeing as I do have a light rifle and a battle rifle, and I'm a comfortable lead right now, I don't really need to call this weapon down. I don't need to draw super amounts of attention to myself. And to be frankly honest, this position I'm in is not very good for seeing enemy spawn points. You do have some spawn points behind the base here and some spawn points over here. But you can't really see um, much of this spawn point over here unless this player pushes up. Okay, And so this position overall is not really good to be in free-for-all. And so I don't want to call down my weapon just yet. I want to call it down position and I know I'm safe, and I know I can get a lot of angles without moving a huge distance. But you got I see a guy here. He jetpacks out, and I'm going to clean him up with a nice little five shot there. Um, I could have cleaned up with four shots, I, I would think, but um, with a jetpacking opponent, you're always probably going to miss one or two bullets. But here, I end up getting some really nice shots on this player, and hit him with a headshot as he jetpacks over my head. Kind of two rash double grenades. I should have turned and threw a grenade in this area. That's okay as I back down here. I would like to point out something I do here with my right stick. This is specifically the stick I aim with, not the stick I move from left to right with, okay? As you are thruster packing, you can re-maneuver your Spartan's first-person viewpoint into another angle. So as you're thruster packing, let's say, I jump over this ledge, I thruster pack, and as I'm thruster packing, I turn my Spartan so that when he goes back in the first person, he's gonna be facing this angle. Well, that's exactly what I do here because I want to thruster pack off this building very quickly and get to the ground very fast while running into this doorway directly after I do so. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to jump right here. I'm going to thruster pack and turn my Spartan viewpoint to the left as I am thruster packing. Then I'm going to be able to um, run here, sprint a little bit, and I'm going to be able to try to get this player. Unfortunately, the double VR shot melee doesn't necessarily register, so I have to melee him a second time to get the kill. And this guy used the assault rifle very, very well to clean me up. Perfect range. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't have much to say about that last unscrupulous activity that he did to my buttocks. And so I'm going to look at Water Cave, get some solid shots off here. Now, I would like to point out something right here, okay? Now I want to back up the gameplay just a little bit here as I pull off my light rifle off of this spawn and I zoom across the map here, okay? Now, I want you guys to be focusing on the dead center of my reticle here, okay? I am not using the outer lines around um, the very, very dead center circle to aim, okay? Many people get distracted by the orange flashiness of the zooming reticle of the light rifle. You want to be only focusing on that dead center portion. I find Many people try to generally aim their reticle at the player's head. You don't need to focus on anything other than the dead, dead center circle of the reticle. Don't focus on the outer lines or the, the lines that extend to the side, like a little, little wings right next to your reticle. 
don't focus on any of those things whatsoever. They're just flamboyant abstractions that are kind of distracting overall. They don't help you aim, and it's just something where you need to narrow down your focus to that center area. Now right here, the very good example of an enemy player spawning behind me, okay, in this area. Um, you can see that this player d did spawn behind me right here as I push up to this area. See, he spawns right over here, and um, it's a really good play what I end up pulling off here. As I've stated in previous videos, the light rifle is a four-shot kill when zoomed. It is a five-shot kill when unzoomed. But if you combine the two, okay, if at least one of your shots is a zoomed light rifle shot, the other three shots don't have to be zoomed, and they can kill the player off in just four shots, not five. So you can, in other words, as long as you're hitting the enemy player with one zoom shot, the light rifle is just as fa just as fast a kill as the battle rifle or DMR or the carbine, and it's very, very useful in that respect. So I don't really have time as this player is ambushing me from behind to pull up my battle rifle. Most players would do that because they're not comfortable enough with their light rifle. So I'm going to pull out, um, just keep my light rifle here, and I'm going to aim some zoom shots at this player, and then nail him. Okay, And you can see how very, very quickly I, I zoom. It really doesn't take that much. Okay, you just need to zoom very quickly and aim at this person, nail that shot, and then clean him up with the rest. This is a very, very quick kill, one of the better examples I have with getting a light rifle kill in this fashion. I do basically the same thing here, getting a zoom shot and then cleaning this guy up with a headshot. I use my thrust pack to get away from this guy behind me. You can see probably he spawned um, over next to the initial railgun spawn over in this general area and then just push down this rock. That's called crack rock over there. Some people have less un or more unscrupulous names for it, but I just choose to call it Crack Rock. This guy pushes out a Crack Rock. Sloppy shots, but I end up cleaning up with the headshot. Godtality jumps up and is able to take him out. Now, this is a very, very um, neat jump right here. You can just jump up this little ledge and then move up to this area. And he does a really good job of doing that here. Now, as I respawn here, um, Godtality gets sniped. I get the assist, pull out my light rifle, and then call down the... Fire rifle. I love this loadout that I'm using with firepower. I forgot to mention that I'm actually using firepower, battle rifle, white rifle, and ammo. Um, some would trade the ammo for dexterity. It's probably a good idea in this type of playlist, but I like ammo because it allows me to pick up weapons like the binary rifle and have more ammo for them. And it also allows me to carry more ammo for my loadout weapons, obviously. Now, right here is a great position that I'm in because I'm going to be able to use this ledge to snipe people with the binary rifle. And it's actually some really, really good angle plays here, as I can see Godtality, who's still over there, get him for the revenge. And then I'm looking top center, spot this player, this guy jumps right over my first shot, I nail him with the second shot though. And you want to be jumping, or crouch jumping, onto this little ledge. You can see how it's differentiated from the rest of the walk, rock wall surface. And I say that this is in, in another Ragnarok video, it's so useful, it's not even funny, especially when you're assaulting this base and, like, um, capture the flag or something, it's extremely useful. Spot this player again, the same guy I just killed top middle. Um, he must be having a really bad day right now, as I'm going to look over at the sniper that randomly ordnance dropped. Now, you do have random ordnance drops like the sniper that spawns here, or the incineration that spawns here, or binary rifles that spawn here. These are random ordnance drops. They're not timed. They just can randomly occur throughout the game. When uh, Halo 4 first came out, these were a lot more common, and it was really unfortunate because you'd get a team that was down a few kills, and they got a binary rifle, you know, twice in a row, and it just really didn't help out. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore. As this timer's bleeding down, I'm able to kill this player going for that sniper rifle. He has no idea what's going on. And I would like to point out the smartness of this play that I make right here. As I push away from this high area, um, these players are going to be respawning. As you can see, this player that I've already killed twice is respawning behind this base. And so I really just want to make sure I'm moving away from that area so they don't immediately see me. The sniper rifle is up over here, but I'm not too concerned with that. As I can snipe anyone going for it, just using it as bait. Now, I, I am looking over here. See this guy who had the sniper rifle, and as you can see, he, has a, he had a sniper. If he had had the sniper and had been looking over here, which he likely did, then he probably would have found me and killed me. But because I moved over away from this position for a while, um, he wasn't able to spot me and got distracted. I'm going to 
be looking for this player. And when you are zooming, you do have those two beams that come out of your binary rifle. Now, I would like to say this player knows where I am, who's coming from behind me. And this is a very, very interesting fact about the binary rifle as I slow this down, okay? This is why you do not want to snapshot or hit fire with the binary rifle. You always want to be zooming if possible, even in close range situations like this. This is very interesting to point out because a a lot of players don't conceptually understand this. It's a little difficult to explain, but this really, really gives a great example. Essentially, when you hit fire or shoot the binary rifle when you're not zoomed, the bolt that you fire, or the light bolt that you fire, has the ability to go anywhere within those four lines that you see that I'm aiming with right now. Anywhere between those four lines. Not in the dead center of those four lines. And if this, what I'm about to show you, doesn't convince you then I really don't know what will as I very very slowly progress the film frame by frame as, as this guy jetpacks up to me and I want you to notice how I'm he is literally dead center of my screen now it's extremely important to notice here that where the bolt went specifically now you can tell where it went here look at the bottom left of my reticle just below the word out in out of ammo and you can see a little bolt that is where the bolt actually went. It went just past him. At first I thought it might have gone between his legs or something like that, that's what she said, but um, it didn't. Um, I actually just missed him due to the fact that the binary rifle does, is not accurate within that reticle when you're not zoomed. So I should have zoomed here to make absolutely sure that my reticle was on him. As it is, he ends up cleaning me up. So this is very important to realize um, you don't want to be hit firing with the binary rifle for that reason. So I'm pulling out my light rifle here. This is a great example of just using the light rifle to catch players off guard. It's so fast and brutal in its damage. I didn't even get the headshot here, but it only takes five shots to kill someone um, with a zoomed light rifle, even if you don't hit the headshot. If you do hit the headshot, it's only a four-shot kill. That was a rash kind of play on my part. I shouldn't have pushed out like that. This is a kind of bad spawn. Um, I, as I said, that position that I was just in doesn't have many, many angles. He's going to push into this area. Luckily, God tell it, he doesn't see me. He's just completely unaware that I throw a grenade that doesn't even hit him. And I clean him up very easily, grabbing his binary rifle, which just has one shot left in it. I reload it, promptly shoot it into an overshield guy, and give this kill to the enemy player getting the assist. And I hit him with a headshot to gain my next ordinance. I call it my damage boost, but unfortunately, God tell it, the person I just killed with a binary rifle here spawns behind me. So he likely just got his ordinance after getting an assist on someone. And so he's going to push out and try to kill me. Now, what I'm, what's going through my head at this point, and this is the last part of the game, is that when I call down this damage boost, he sees it. Okay, I thought that he would see this damage boost and go straight for it. So my mental thought process was, I'm going to bait the damage boost. I'm going to move back around this general area, and I'm going to try to grenade the damage boost when he tries to pick it up. It, it takes a few seconds. For you to steal someone else's ordnance. You can't pick it straight up off the ground, so I'm going to use that to my advantage. But he doesn't end up seeing it at all, and it's very puzzling because I have a light rifle, and as you can see, um, the binary rifle is clearly on my back here. The closer this guy is to me, the better. Um, seeing as I have this long weapon on my back, he definitely should push up very quickly and between these rocks, preferably jumping on top of this one and then on top of this one. That's, that's exactly what I would have done, but that's because I know this map very well. Clearly this player does not play this players very often, and he's not aware of this. So I push over to my damage boost, he doesn't see, grab it, throw a grenade perfectly at his feet, and then just nail him with the grenade as I put a few, one shot into him before he dies. So guys, that's the end of the game. I got 30 kills, um, and I hope this helped you understand how to play Ragnarok a little bit better. Some tips on the light rifle, and overall decision making that you can use in your games. I love the map Ragnarok. It's definitely one of my favorite, if not my absolute favorite, um, big team battle map besides Blood Gulch slash Hemorrhage. But I'll see you guys in the next capture, whatever I end up recording. Um, subscribe, like the video, help people find it, carry the fire. I'll see you guys next time.